We fellow veterans, as members of this honor guard, representing the American <coughs> Legion Post 34 and the veterans of Foreign War Post 2237, have assembled here this day to honor the life and the military service of our departed comrade, Staff Sergeant Jim L. Hurst. When called upon to serve in the armed forces of this great nation, Jim did so with pride and honor as a member of the United States Army during 1943 to 46. And now Jim has joined the ranks of the Supreme Commander of the Universe, God Almighty. And as they march, their footsteps make no sound. Neither words nor tears will bring back the sound of his voice or the touch of his hand, for this has been instilled by our Heavenly Father. So that just leaves us with the lasting memory of his love for his family, his devotion to God, and his service to this great nation. As we fold this flag in memory of our fallen comrade, Staff Sergeant Jim L. Hurst, let us remember that the blue field represents the sky above, but always under the watchful eye of God. The red stripes tell of the blood, the sweat, and the tears that Jim shed in his line of duty toward the freedom we are blessed with today. The white stripes proclaim the hope for eternal peace, for it was Jim's prayer that his efforts and service to God and country would bring everlasting freedom to future generations. This flag is the symbol of our nation's freedom that Jim served with honor. Ready for presentation. Jim Tom, on behalf of the President of the United States, Secretary of Defense, this honor guard and the people of this great nation, I am proud to present your father's flag under which you so proudly serve and bravely defend. Order! 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. We've come here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Jim Harsh. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, death, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. O God, who gave us birth, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs even before we ask. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death and help us to live as those who are prepared to die. When our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live so that living or dying, our life may be in you and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, you suffer trial, so that the genuineness of your faith may prove itself worthy at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, yet you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the harvest of your faith, you reap the salvation of your souls. Jim loved God and he loved his family. He was born and raised in New Virginia, Iowa and played basketball and baseball in high school. After graduation, he began work at the Hotel Fort Des Moines where he began to learn the cooking skills that he became well known for. Jim and Evelyn had known each other since kindergarten and were married in 1944 and were blessed with 43 years together. During that time, Jim was drafted and served three years in the Army. When he returned to Iowa, he worked for Hy-Vee before it was Hy-Vee. And for most of the last 70 years, Jim called Oskaloosa his home. He worked for Swift and Company. He managed the coffee shop at the Downing Hotel and worked at Oskaloosa Food Products um, full-time and part-time for the next 38 years. 33 years ago, Jim and Betty were married and they enjoyed many winters together in Arizona after Jim's retirement. He was a good and faithful husband. He was a hard worker all his life. He was an excellent cook. He loved to golf and he always had good old stories to tell to anyone who would take the time to listen. He experienced a lot of life in his 97 years and was very, still very active uh, even in his final year. He was a longtime member of the Century United Methodist Church and he's remembered as a good man and a man with a strong faith by those who knew him well. Jim's time on this earth has now been completed and so we pray that he's moved on to the place that Jesus has prepared. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Our prayer today is that Jim has seen that verse fulfilled, that he's seen God face to face, and that we too, when our journey here is finished, will be able to join him in that place of peace and joy. In Psalm 23, we find these words of peace. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Almighty God, into your hands we now commend your son, Jim Harsh, in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of James Harsh. Before he was ours, he is yours. For all that he has given us to make us what we are, for that of him which lives and grows in each of us, and for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer him back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another, make us faithful to serve one another, and give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always.